Okay, in previous videos we've looked at examples of polynomial rings, but we've never like truly defined them really carefully, and so that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's suppose we've got R, which is a commutative ring with one, although you can do this over um, any ring, it's just typical to work over a commutative ring with one. And so an object called P of X, which is A0 plus A1 of X all the way up to A N X to the N, where all of these AIs are in the ring, and I should say here that AN is not equal to zero. Um, that's called a polynomial over R with indeterminate X. Okay? And then AN is called the leading coefficient of P of X. So that's a definition that you've probably seen in calculus. The degree of P of X is said to be N, so that's the largest power of X that you see. Again, something that you've probably seen before. If a n equals 1, in other words, if the leading coefficient of this polynomial is 1, then we say that this is a monic polynomial. And then finally, the set of all polynomials is denoted by this r bracket x, or sometimes r adjoin x. Okay, great. So we're going to do a couple of things with this polynomial ring, the first of which is to prove that it is actually a commutative ring with 1. Okay, so uh, let's kind of see how that goes. So a proof. So there are parts of this that I won't uh, do. So I'm not going to check everything super carefully, like the distributivity of multiplication over addition, that it's a group uh, where addition is uh, defined just by polynomial addition, because all of that is pretty clear. So here I'll put not all details. So maybe I will point out that the one in this case will be just the number one, and then uh, all the coefficients of the would-be x's would be zero, and that's uh, also kind of obvious to see. What I will do is maybe prove the commutativity of multiplication, um, and that should really equip you with enough skills to prove the rest of it pretty easily. So uh, let's go ahead and let p of x equal a0 plus a1x all the way up to a n x to the n and then let's say q of x is b0 plus b1x plus all the way up to b m x to the m okay good now what we want to do is look at the product of these two things so the product of p of x and q of x so we know that that is going to be some object, which is C0 plus C1x all the way up to uh, Cm plus n, um, x to the m plus n, because we know that the product of a degree n polynomial with a degree m polynomial will necessarily be, deg be degree m plus n. So now we just need to get, get a feel for what those coefficients are. And uh, we can do it pretty easily by example and then extrapolate that out to a formula. So notice that uh, C1, sorry, C0, that'll be the constant term in this product. But that constant term is going to be given by A0 times B0. Because notice any other thing that you get from multiplying these together will give you uh, a coefficient of some power of x. So A0, B0. Now let's look at C1. So in other words, that's the term uh, which is the coefficient of x to the first power. So there's only two ways to get that. There's a1 times b0. So a1 times b0 plus a0 times b1. So we get something like that. Now let's go ahead and look at uh, C2. Two. So that's going to be all coefficients of x squared. So uh, let's go ahead and add a term in here, a2x squared and b2x squared, just so that we can use that. And notice we'll have uh, a2 times b0 plus a1 times b1, because x times x is x squared, and then a0 times b2. Okay, and now we can see some structure happening here. Notice that we have a lowering indices of A while we have rising indices of B, and the two indices add up to this index of the C. So maybe we'll say here we can notice 
that uh, C, uh, maybe we'll say K, is going to be equal to the sum L equals zero up to K. So that's K plus one total terms in the sum, which is what we have for all of these. Notice here K is equal to one. We have K plus one or two total terms. Here K is equal to two. We have K plus two, uh, sorry, K plus one or three total terms. And notice uh, we're gonna start off with AK minus L times BL. So I think that'll do it. Notice we start off at the largest index of A and we go towards the largest index of B. So that's what we have for our multiplication. And we can actually just define that as our multiplication. So that's exactly what I'll do. I'll define this uh, to be our multiplication and then we'll show that it is uh, commutative. Okay, I'll erase the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so let's see where we are. We defined p of x to be this polynomial with coefficients a i and q of x to be this polynomial with coefficients b i. And then we defined their product to be this polynomial with coefficients c i where the c i's are defined in this way. So c k is the sum l equals zero to k of a k minus l times b l. Now, that means that uh, we can also have q of x times p of x is going to be equal to c0 and then I'll put a hat on it because it may not be the same. Obviously, obviously it will be the same because we're going for this to be commutative, but it may not be the same. A priori, we do not know it's the same. And then plus c1 hat x plus all the way up to cm plus n hat x to the m plus n. And here, these coefficients are uh, defined by the following. So C hat K is uh, going to be equal to the sum L equals zero to K of B of K minus L times A of L. Because here we're doing our product of polynomials in reverse. Now the next thing we want to do is show that these two coefficients are equal. In other words, CK is equal to CK hat, but this is just a pretty easy exercise of re-indexing. So we're going to go ahead and re-index this by sending L to K minus L. Great. But notice that's going to send K minus L uh, down to L. So really we're just kind of reversing the order of this sum and notice that's going to turn this into the sum L equals zero to K because now when L equals zero, we have our new L is K minus zero, which is um, K and then when L equals K, then uh, our new L is K minus K, which is zero. So we just reverse the order essentially. And now we're gonna have B sub L, A sub K minus L. Now the next thing we can do is commute these guys because we know that R itself is commutative. So we have the sum L equals zero to K of A K minus L. Uh, and then times BL, but notice that's exactly the way that we define the CK up here. So we have CK hat equals CK, but this is true for all K. There was no choice made of which index we were at. So in other words, we have P of X times Q of X equals Q of X times P of X. So the multiplication here is commutative. And now you, you can use a similar strategy to pr prove that the multiplication is associative and everything else. So I'll let you guys look in a textbook or actually it's a really good exercise on your own to do that. Okay, I'm gonna clean up the board and then uh, we're going to look at one more little result. Okay, now we're going to look at the super classic result that says if R is an integral domain, so is R of X. So this property of, be, of being an integral domain is something that transfers from the original ring into the polynomial ring. So it's good to keep track of things that transfer from one object to another. So we've seen that with groups. The property of being a cyclic group transfers from a group to the quotient group. The property of being an abelian ring transfers from the ring to the quotient ring and the ring to the polynomial ring and so on and so forth. So this idea of adding structure to a ring but still retaining some of the properties is super important and that's what we're looking at here. So we're actually going to prove this by the contrapositive.
So uh, let's go ahead and see what that means. So that says uh, if our uh, adjoin x is not an integral domain, neither is R. So in other words, if we have zero divisors inside of R of X, then we have zero divisors inside of R. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this goes. So let's suppose that P of X, which is equal to A zero plus up to A N X to the N, um, and Q of X, which equals B zero plus all the way up to B M X to the M, are elements of our polynomial ring with, um, let's see, a sub n and b sub m not equal to zero. So we're assuming that these are non-zero polynomials, but if they're non-zero polynomials, then there is a coefficient of some power of x which is non-zero, and thus there is a maximum um, power of x whose coefficient is non-zero, and we'll just take that to be the degree of p and the degree of q. Okay, so the fact that p and q are non-zero will give us this, so maybe I should say that these are both not equal to zero. Um, okay, fantastic. Um, but we have p of x times q of x equals zero. So that's uh, another thing that we are assuming. Now we want to go ahead and notice that uh, the coefficient of x to the m plus n in this product, p of x times q of x, is equal to zero on one hand. But then on the other hand, it's equal to a n times b m by that product formula that we had on the previous board. So, but what that tells us is that there exists um, a n and b m within the ground ring uh, such that uh, a n and b m are uh, both not equal to zero, but their product is equal to zero. In other words, they are zero divisors. And so what we have is R is not an integral domain. Okay, great. So I'm gonna clean up the board and then we're gonna look at uh, another example. Okay, now we wanna look at the following question. So if K is a field, is K adjoined X a field? In other words, the ring of polynomials with coefficients in X, is that a field? And uh, the quick answer to this is no. And you can see this very, very easily. So let's go ahead and consider the following polynomial, P of X equals X inside of K adjoined X. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the product of P of X with an arbitrary polynomial within Q of X. And so maybe let's take, uh, sorry, K of X. Let's take Q of X equal to B zero plus up to B M X to the M. And uh, notice that the degree of uh, Q of X here is equal to M. And here maybe we'll take B M not equal to zero. Great. So the next thing to notice is that in this case, P of X times Q of X equals B zero X plus all the way up to B M X to the M plus one. Great. And then uh, notice what this uh, implies is that the degree of P of X times Q of X equals M plus one. But up here we can see that M is bigger than or equal to zero. Great. And we know that because we could have just a constant here. That's fine. That's a fine choice for a polynomial. So that's bigger than or equal to zero. Um, but if it is a constant, it's a non-zero constant, so that's important. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, notice that that makes this thing bigger than or equal to one. Great. Um, but now we can see that um, 
something bigger than or equal to one is strictly bigger than zero, but zero is exactly the degree of the constant polynomial one, which is the identity. Great. So what that tells us is that uh, P of X times Q of X um, is not equal to one for all Q of X in K adjoint X. Um, in other words, this polynomial P is not a unit. So let's write that P of X, not a unit in K adjoint X. Now, a uh, question, can we tweak uh, this polynomial ring with coefficients in a field in order to make it a field? And the answer is yes. Maybe I'll clean up the board and we'll kind of look at how that goes. Okay, so for our next example, let's say if K is a field, is K bracket bracket X. So, uh, you know, maybe I haven't said this in a video, but K bracket bracket X is the ring of formal power series with coefficients in K. So in other words, this is all sums of the form N equals zero to infinity, A N X to the N, where these A Ns are elements from our ring. Great, so the ring of formal power series. And um, can you show that this is a field? And yes, you can. I'm not gonna go through all of the details. I'll just go through like one very, very simple example of this. Um, and that is if we take um, one minus X, so that's a polynomial in K. Well, so that's a formal power series in uh, K uh, join X, K bracket bracket X, and that's because, well, this is just a plain old polynomial, but the polynomial ring is very clearly a, a sub ring of this ring of formal power series. So, you know, there's nothing really going on there. Um, but notice that via geometric series, this is equal to one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed and so on and so forth. So one over one minus X is equal to that. Um, which tells us that this guy right here, one minus X and this guy right here are in fact inverses of each other um, inside this uh, ring of formal power series. And you can actually check that directly. It's a pretty simple, we could do one minus X times. Now let's go ahead and write this as the sum N equals zero to infinity of X to the N. That's what that thing is. Um, but notice that gives us the sum n equals zero to infinity of x to the n minus the sum n equals zero to infinity of x to the n plus one. Notice I've just distributed uh, this sum through onto both of these. But now what I can do is re-index, send n to n minus one. That's gonna change this so it starts at one and then it's gonna take this power down here uh, to one. Great, um, which tells us that these things uh, cancel each other out except for the n equals zero term in the first bit, but the n equals zero term in the first bit is exactly the number one. So again, this element has an inverse when, within this ring of formal power series. And actually, I believe every um, one of these formal power series uh, has an inverse as well, although we won't prove that here. Okay, I'm gonna erase the board and then we're gonna look at uh, one more example. Okay, for our last example, we're going to look at this question. If K is a field, is K a join X, X inverse? This is called the ring of Laurent polynomials. So uh, just as a reminder, the ring of Laurent polynomials is equal to all elements of this form. So we'll take uh, N maybe from minus N to positive M of a sub n x to the n where a n is from this uh, field k. So for example, here's one of the guys that's in here. We could have maybe 3x to the minus 2 plus 2x plus 5 plus 3x uh, to the fifth. So that would be an example of an element which is in this uh, ring of Laurent polynomials. And there's actually a generalization of this to uh, the ring of formal Laurent series. Um, 
which kind of puts this example together with the last one, but you know, we're not going to talk about that right here. Okay, great. So now notice uh, some things <clears throat> that did not have inverses within uh, the ring of polynomials do now. Notice that x times x inverse is equal to 1. But, you know, maybe not everything has an inverse. And I think maybe you can check for yourself that you can uh, find something that isn't a unit. So um, again, I'll kind of leave it to you to do that. Um, but it's kind of an interesting question.